So in this video, we're going to be talking about Sparta, a Greek community that is devoted entirely to the art of war. Uh, the Spartans are settled in the southern end of the Peloponnesus in a region that is called Laconia. Uh, the, um, the Greek name for Sparta is Lacedaemon, but you don't need to know that. All you need to know is that Sparta is uh, settled at the very dawn of the Iron Age through the migration of the Dorian Greeks through the western end of the, uh, of the Aegean world, uh, down the um, western portions of the Greek mainland and uh, into the Peloponnese in particular. The Peloponnese, this uh, promontory, this peninsula that we see here is settled primarily by Dorians. And uh, the, uh, the most seminal moment of, of uh, Spartan history is that when they arrive and, uh, in the, the, the southern Peloponnesus and seek to settle there and essentially, you know, have uh, not much further to go, um, they, uh, the place that they settle is already inhabited and they take this as a challenge. Uh, the, uh, the, the Spartan reaction to arriving in the southern Peloponnesus, which is already inhabited by Messenians and Laconians, is to conquer them and to essentially force them into a perpetual status of prisoner of war. And so the, uh, the, the conquest of the Messenians and Laconians at the very beginning of Spartan history, somewhere around the year 800, is, uh, is one of the determining factors in, in the course of Spartan events because uh, they, uh, they must remain on a military footing in order to keep control over this population of, of prisoners of war that, uh, that outnumbers them anywhere from seven or ten to one. This, this vast population um, that they have forced into servitude to them uh, must be kept in perpetual servitude, and this is one of the factors that leads Sparta into a state of, of uh, in a mindset of perpetual war and guides them to the exploration of the Greek idea as being the pursuit of, of the ideal warrior community. Uh, another thing that drives this is the fact that Sparta is, uh, is very isolated. Compared to uh, uh, to other cities, even other cities on the Peloponnesus like uh, Argos or Corinth, which are on the coast, which are uh, involved in a great deal of trade by sea, Sparta is well inland. It is uh, it is in a uh, valley which is basically hemmed in uh, by mountains. It's not connected very well even to the sea. The uh, the river that flows through Sparta is, 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 is too small to be important for use in, in uh, commercial uh, trade. And so the, the Spartans uh, tend to uh, be disconnected from the, the rest of the Greek world in terms of trade, in terms of culture, uh, and uh, they, 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 it becomes this hothouse of, of insular thinking. Uh, their their mind is turned inward. Um, their thoughts are primarily concerned with the uh, the Spartan community and the protection of Spartans uh, against the uh, the community of Messenians that they've uh, forced into servitude. And so, as a result, uh, we get uh, very early on the uh, the sense that the Sparta dedicates itself to being a warrior society. Um, the, all of the Greeks believe in pursuing uh, the ideal form of society, the ideal form of what it means to be Greeks. And for Sparta, this focuses down to a single idea, uh, the, the pursuit of, of, uh, of, a, of a population of, of Spartan citizens that is made up of the best possible group of warriors in terms of breeding and in terms of training. And so the, the city of Sparta becomes this machine for the development of generation after generation of, of, of perfectly trained warriors who, um, whose, whose, uh, whose beliefs are focused on fighting and, if necessary, dying for, for Sparta. Uh, and so this, this means that, uh, uh, that uh, Sparta becomes sort of uh, um, uh, uh, trapped 
in, in the sort of a moment of its emergence at the dawn of the archaic period. Uh, you know, all other pursuits that the rest of the Greek world uh, embraces and fosters, uh, forms of self-expression, uh, you know, rhetoric and oratory and writing and poetry, uh, and even skilled labor, you know, uh, masonry, uh, architecture, you know, carpentry, uh, uh, you know, all of these things, you know, are... Uh, are seen as as distractions, and somebody who dedicates themselves to, you know, uh, to to the fine arts, uh, would be somebody who is uh, uh, is is engaging in decadence, engaging in a betrayal of what it is to be a man, uh, and uh, the Spartans tend to look down on the rest of Greek society as indulging in decadence in these these leisure activities in which they. Um, are more prone to lie upon couches and drink wine and 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 write or listen to poetry than they are to be uh, to be real men to be real Greeks to be uh, training themselves to fight training themselves to be the best possible Greeks the best possible warriors this is what it means for Sparta and so this tends to divide Sparta from the rest of the Greek world even further as as the Spartans understand uh, the rest of the Greeks less and less and vice versa. Uh, the other effect of this is that uh, the Spartans do not write their own story because they don't believe in uh, in literature. They don't believe in expression. They don't believe in in any form of, of you know personal uh, uh, achievement other than in warfare. And so, what we know about the Spartans comes primarily from the writings of outsiders. And so, you know, our our view of the Spartans is. Uh, on the one hand, uh, you know, full of, of, of awe and, and admiration for what they achieve as warriors, but uh, also of this, uh, from the standpoint of the society that uh, behaves in a way that is uh, peculiar to anyone else in the Greek world. Uh, the um, Spartans themselves... Uh, tell themselves and the rest of the world that uh, their uh, their uh, principles were laid down uh, very early on in the eighth century by a lawgiver named, named uh, Lycurgus, and Lycurgus uh, essentially created, according to legend, the uh, the rules of Spartan society, which is that from age seven onward you begin training to be a warrior. Uh, you live in the barracks. Um, and uh, you know, marriage is is solely for the purpose of of creating a new generation of warriors. Your entire being, uh, your life, and your work, and your uh, your energies, and and your mind, are all dedicated to uh, um, making of yourself the best possible warrior that you can contribute to uh, a Sparta. So the thing about this is that. Uh, uh, the, that Sparta, you know, does this for the the Spartan citizens alone, which consists of the uh, the elite members of society. In other words, Sparta has reduced its citizen body down to its uh, nobility, down to its aristoi. Only members of this warrior elite can be citizens. Only they can participate in decision-making in society. Everyone else is disenfranchised. Everyone else is, uh, um, is subordinated to this warrior elite. On the other hand, unlike other places, everybody within this warrior elite is supposed to be the same because these are hoplite warriors, and hoplite warriors fight uh, uh, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, um, shields overlapped. Uh, they are supposed to be equal in war. Everybody is supposed to achieve the same standard. Everybody is supposed to fight at the, the level of excellence. This is what Aristoi means in the, in the Spartan world. And as a result, in a way, you know, the, the, the homoioi of, of, uh, of Spartan society, because they are all equal, and because the the citizen body consists only of them, uh, there's a you can make the argument that they are you know the perfect democracy. You know, in in Athens, you know Athens forges itself into a democracy, but there's inequality there because of differences in wealth, differences in status, differences in 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 blood, in nobility and ancestry. All of that's irrelevant in Sparta. 
In Sparta, all of the citizens are the same. It's just that the citizen body has been reduced down to uh, a handful of people, only if, uh, you know nine or ten thousand people, the, the 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 body of the warrior elite, and uh, underneath them is everyone else who has no say, but who make this possible. So we have the the people that are actually inhabiting the the city of Sparta, the Periokoi, uh, the, who are referred to as the neighbors, the dwellers nearby. These are the skilled laborers that do all the work that the the Spartan warriors need, but don't do for themselves. Uh, you know the the leather working and metal working and uh, you know you know construction, uh, you know masonry, carpentry, uh, pottery, and all of these other you know skilled uh, tasks. Uh, they're they're vital to the uh, to the Spartan society, but they have no say. They are disenfranchised. Even more so, the Helots. The Helots are the Messenians and the, the Laconians that were uh, conquered at the very beginning of, of Spartan history, uh, and they remain conquered, and they still vastly outnumber the Spartans. Um, uh, 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 but uh, they're. Their job is to farm the land so the Spartans don't have to. One of the things that, that gets in the way of whenever you try to you know, want to do something in, in the ancient world is your first priority is to farm the land so that you can feed yourself and your family. And only after that can you do things like, you know, engage in uh, the pursuit of what it is that you want to be, whether it's, you know, um, you know, an ideal warrior or, you know, a carpenter or a poet or a priest or whatever. The Spartans, in order to uh, allow the homoioi to concentrate solely on training themselves to be the ideal warrior, um, they make the helots do the farming for them. Uh, the helots are serfs, not slaves. What this means is that they are, they are bound to the land. They can't move off of the lands that they farm, uh, but uh, you know, they, they farm. Uh, uh, on their own initiative, what's, uh, they are required to uh, give to the uh, homoioi that they're responsible to a, a tribute, a portion of the things that they farm. They keep the rest for themselves, and they can eat it or trade it or whatever. And so, you know, they're um, you know they're not slaves in that sense. Uh, they're serfs. They're they're bound to the land, and they give a portion of the the harvest to the homoioi. But there is a constant danger of the helots uh, rising up against the homoioi, and so the, uh, the the helots are constantly repressed. It's a part of the training of the Spartan warrior to to consciously repress the helots. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Spartan society does everything that it can to um, demonstrate to each new generation that the helots are inferior, that they are ridiculous, uh, and uh, that they are, you know, something less than actual humans. In Sparta, there isn't a, a large quantity of slaves at all. Uh, the, the, the work of, of a laboring class is done by the helots. And so, um, you know, whereas elsewhere in the Greek world you'd, you'd find some quantity of slaves, there's relatively little need for it in Sparta. And so the groups that we have in, in the Spartan social hierarchy are, are the homoioi, the perioikoi, um, and uh, the helots. So the homoioi are Spartan society themselves, and they dedicate themselves uh, physically as well as mentally. You know, the representation of of the uh, of the of the ideal male form that we see so often in in Greek art is is um, you know m much uh, more likely to be actually representative of reality in the case of the Spartan warrior. The Spartan warriors constantly train, uh, and as a result, they are I ideal physical specimens um, as well as being given over mentally entirely to uh, the, uh, the, um, the the glory of Sparta and uh, uh, and uh, you know what they're able to do to achieve that, um, the Helots as a result are you know are, are subordinated to this and uh, um, in addition to being constantly repressed, you know we don't even hear the point of view of what it is like to live in in uh, in, in Spartan society as a Helot. Uh, you know, because uh, even the outsiders that are writing about Sparta write about it from the standpoint of the Spartan warrior, and so um, there's uh, there's almost nothing in the way of of direct indication of of what the ordinary everyday life of the Spartan helot is is even like, other than the fact that we know 
that there are indeed occasional Helot uprisings that are brutally crushed by the, uh, by the Spartan armies. The training for the Spartans begins very early uh, in uh, what is known as the Agoge, the, uh, the, the Spartan training uh, system. It begins at age seven, and uh, and the, the agoge involves the uh, the the Spartan boy forming uh, direct personal relationships with uh, with older boys, and uh, increasingly uh, the you know the the men of the uh, of the of the barracks uh, they eat in the in the mess halls in the barracks, uh, and uh, uh, and they essentially grow up there. And so the the Angoge is is a means by which each generation of uh, of of Spartan youth is indoctrinated into this lifestyle and this way of thinking. Um, the uh, the Spartan women remain uh, outside of this, but in the service of it. So in other words. On the one hand, the Spartan men uh, in the barracks leave the women to uh, deal with a lot of the things that uh, you know are involved in public life that would be dealt with by men elsewhere, uh, including the management of property and that kind of thing. So in this sense, the Spartan woman is is more free than uh, some other Greek women, uh, women of Athens, for example. But uh, the, the flip side of this is that Spartan women are just as indoctrinated, just as trained to think about what their contribution is to Spartan warrior society, which is uh, to, uh, to produce a, a next generation of Spartan warriors to be a, a wife and mother. Now, in terms of marriage, this means that the Spartan woman has, uh, uh, in some ways, greater freedom. Arranged marriage in other societies usually takes place as connections between important families in order to give, uh, you know, families a, a, a leverage within the competition for wealth and prominence in places like Athens. Uh, arranged marriage is not necessary in Sparta because all the families are equal. And so uh, marriage has nothing to do with the status and preeminence of one family over another. And so Spartan women have more freedom in some sense to choose who their mate is going to be. Although at the end of the day, they don't end up spending a lot of time with him because the, the warriors living in the uh, um, in the barracks and only has periodic furloughs to go uh, to the household and, and have conjugal relations with his wife and uh, uh, you know and then return you know back to the barracks uh, to resume his life as a warrior uh, uh, but uh, you know the, the the Spartan woman is is uh, is trained to think of the the greatest good for her being a mother of successful soldiers and uh, you know the uh, when Sparta is at war, the you know the 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 uh, the greatest glory comes from even if the the Spartan army were to lose, for the if, if the Spartan army engages in a battle, there are either two choices: to win or to come home dead on your shield. Only these two things will keep your mother from being disgraced by your achievements as a man. And so, you know, the, you, we have all of these anecdotes about uh, a Spartan mother demonstrating, you know, the, the, the greatest amount of pride and, and, uh, and reputation comes from having uh, four sons, all of whom were great warriors and all of whom came home on their shields. The other thing about uh, uh, motherhood uh, is that uh, uh, the Spartans believe in eugenics and in breeding the ideal warrior to have... Uh, sons that are as strong as possible. And their belief is that this happens as a result and part of physical fitness on behalf of both parents. And so this means that not only is the Spartan man physically trained as part of the Agoge, but the Spartan women also undergo physical education as well as a, a certain amount of education in, you know, in, in uh, running families and so forth in, in you know, home economics. Uh, the, so the Spartan women are expected to be, uh, you know, physical specimens of, uh, of ideal form just as much as the men are. And if a child is born sickly, then that child is left on a hillside to die rather than to grow up to be a weak member of society. 
the Spartan Constitution uh, is uh, the main thing that you need to know about this is that uh, uh, Sparta has two kings unusually for you know the Greek world the Sparta the Greeks get rid of their kings uh, uh, but it, it, everywhere except for Sparta Sparta has two kings their job is to lead the Spartan armies one of the reasons they have two kings is so that if they are of different ages one of them can be available if the other is too young or too old uh, or you know uh, ideally they can go to war on two different fronts at the same time they have uh, a collection of officials called ephors whose job it is to keep watching the kings and make sure that they don't abuse what power that they have that they focus solely on on leading armies and not trying to become uh, a despotic or or to use their power over the spartans in any way uh, the uh, the assembly is is made up of the spartan citizen body which is the warrior elite um, and uh, uh, you know all of this is this this amount of dedication this this uh, this singular focus on this one form of the Greek ideal has uh, has uh, has greatly affected the way that other societies think about the Spartans. Uh, this begins back in in contemporary times in in the, the times of the Spartans themselves. The the Athenians uh, and, and other Greeks, even when they disagreed with what the Spartans were doing, would look upon the, the purity of, of, of Spartan society and their dedication with, a, with amazement and, and, and admiration uh, because the, you know, the, of the, the, the reverse is happening in their own society. In, in places like Athens, so much change is going on that uh, you can feel like you know you don't have control over society, and uh, uh, you know there, there's all this danger of people rising up, and there's constant conflict, and 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 people taking advantage of other people, and the divide between the rich and the poor, uh, and uh, you know all of these distractions, and you know and licentiousness, and and uh, well, you know you know moral uh, you know turpitude, all of these things that come from a society that is diverse and and undergoing great change, people like that in, in Athens can look on, on on Sparta, which is which is holding uh, tightly onto this pure vision of achievement and accomplishing it uh, and honing itself to perfection. Uh, um, the and 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 this can this 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 uh, the writing about this by uh, Athenians of the of the classical period and later um, tends to be uh, tends to leave out the problems involved in the society tends to leave out anything that would uh, interfere with you know the the presentation of this purity and the interesting thing about this is that this this Spartan mirage persists even into modern times because a lot of the the resurgence of 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 uh, of the of study of the Greeks that takes place during the 19th century, uh, during Victorian times, is it, with the background of the Industrial Revolution, when everything is changing, and you know, and 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 there's you know there's all kinds of, of disturbances, and and uh, the working class is 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 angry, and the factories are spewing, uh, you know, you know, uh, darkness into the air, and and you know. The, the what you can expect from your life, no matter what class you belong to, is 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 no longer predictable, no longer the same as what your father could have predicted or expected, or your grandfather. Everything is happening so fast that the uh, the rugs are being pulled out from under you. And 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 so if you're an experience like that in, in you know Victorian England during the Industrial Revolution or something like that, you can you can feel the same amount of admiration and and uh, you know sort of um, yearning even for a place like Sparta where everything is is involved in this purity of dedication to a simple ideal and so the reason that uh, this even comes up is that the Spartan mirage uh, distorts everything that we say about Sparta um, it's something that you need to take into account when you're thinking about Sparta that uh, that it, everything that we know about Sparta, everything that we say about Sparta, is from the outside and from the standpoint of societies that that uh, proceed and change in ways that are dramatically different from the ways that the Spartans experienced, and that's that.